I don't know how I'm going to save my children. Hi guys and welcome back to my channel and to another video. So as you can see, we are in a completely different location of the house. I'm a little bit nervous, I'm not gonna lie. Today's video is something that's going potentially to trigger me. Um, however, I feel as though I need to share this video as a way of um, kind of putting to bed and finding closure on events that happened on this very day one whole year ago. So on the 18th of April 2019, we had a house fire in this very room. And I can already feel my heart rate and my anxiety rising. So yeah, I think I need a cup of tea. Everything tastes better with tea, right? So hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you are a returning subscriber, a massive thank you. And if you have just stumbled across this video, please do be sure to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell and feel free to go back and look through the library of videos that I've been uploading recently. So today's video is going to be really different. As I said in my intro, it's going to be about a life experience that I never thought that I would ever live through. Um, I'm not going to cry, I'm going to be a big girl, it's a day for celebration, ultimately we survived a huge house fire. So on this day, one whole year ago, I was woken up, it was Easter holiday and we were obviously off school and we were still in bed, me and Jay were just snuggling down, I got a cup of tea. So roughly around 8.15 in the morning, Julian came running into the bedroom, he wasn't alarmed and he wasn't scared which kind of made the whole thing really surreal he just said mommy there's a fire downstairs he'd just been down to get himself a fruit shoot and I was just like Julian stop telling fibs there isn't a fire if there was a fire I would know about it I would be able to smell it the smoke alarms would be going off it's absolutely fine if I find out that you are telling me a fib I'm going to really tell you off I'm going to be really really cross with you Julian has amazing incredible storyteller um, and he's really believable um, and he wasn't in the slightest bit alarmed he wasn't you know frantic he wasn't jumping up and down he wasn't anxious he just was very matter of fact about the whole situation and he at the time he was very into um, Fireman Sam which if you're in the US you won't know who Fireman Sam is but Fireman Sam is like a Welsh cartoon character of a fireman he was a massive Fireman Sam Fan. So anyway, at this point, Julian was persistent and he continued with telling me that there was a fire downstairs. So at this point, I did tell Julian off. And so I left Jay upstairs in our bed and I bounced down the stairs with my cup of tea because we all know that tea was coming with me. I looked through the kitchen door and there was a huge fire just bellowing and it was compounded by the fact that everything in there was like there were bikes, roller skates, plastic carrier bags, coats, like rubber trainers with rubber soles, you know, that kind of thing, which obviously in a fire gives off black smoke and it was all black and orange and red and the flames were right up to the window of where I was standing. I almost reached for the door handle to open the door. I don't know why, it was like a natural reaction. And... In that second, the panic set in and I just remember thinking, I don't know how I'm going to save my children. I don't know what to do. So I dragged Julian, because he was still next to me, to the front of the house where we have a porch. So the internal door is always unlocked, um, but the porch door leading out is always locked for security. And I remember just trying to get out that porch door and it was locked. So obviously my next reaction was to get Jaden because I'd left Jaden upstairs. So I ran with Julia upstairs, grabbed Jaden, ran back downstairs, found my phone, called 999, realised very quickly that the keys to the whole house were on my key ring, which was in the room 
where the fire was. We were effectively trapped. So at this point I was on the phone to the call handler on 999 and he was trying to give me some reassurance. He was he was telling me that there were three fire engines deployed, two paramedics, um, and that they would be with me very quickly. And in fairness, the response team were with me within, I think it was like three minutes, but that was the longest three minutes of my entire life from placing that phone call to actually getting my kids out of this house was the longest three minutes. So the call handler said, you know, where are you in the house? So I explained the setup of the house. He said, right, get to a window and get the kids out of the window and then you follow. So at that point I broke down in tears because <sighs> Jaden, as I've explained before, has special needs and Julian is a bit of an escapologist, shall we say. So we lock our windows so that the boys can't get through them, which in hindsight is a bad idea but you never kind of think that you're gonna have a house fire you never think that it will happen to you and I just broke down and said I can't get my children out of this house because we've locked the windows and I don't know where the key is Julian by a total genius found the window key and I managed to unlock the window so I picked Julian up and I threw him <laughs> threw him, no it was downstairs window so he wasn't going to come to damage, I threw him out, he was out, he was clear, um, I told them to go right to the back of the garden and just wait for mummy, so then I got Jaden and I got him out and Julian had to come and get him and run him up to the garden, now at this point I forget that we have a dog, Mitzi's sitting here right next to me and I forgot all about Mitzi, I completely forgot I then had the job of trying to haul my heavy ass, which at that time I was two, maybe two and a half stones heavier than I am now, out of a window that opened not even a half of its capacity. So I was stuck, I was stuck in the window, like I was stuck trying to get out of a burning house because my ass was so heavy. I couldn't get it through the window. Just remember holding the phone and saying, I've got my kids out, but I can't get out. I can't get out. And there's tears and there's snot. And I was stuck and it was horrendous. And <sighs> trying to get this out before emotion gets the better of me. So I just remember passing out as soon as I got out of the house, not because of smoke inhalation, but just purely because my blood sugar had dipped. I'd, but when I came to, I just remember seeing my next door neighbours had lifted the garden fence panel and were taking the kids into their garden. At that point, we were taken into my neighbour's house and everyone in the street seemed to be out. There were three fire engines, two paramedics. Um, it was just horrendous. And by the grace of God, we survived because, honestly, if we'd have slept in any later that day, Julian hadn't wanted... A drink if I don't know if I'd have been later calling 999 I don't know what would have happened and I completely forgot that we had a dog the firemen rescued Mitzi and we were all reunited and someone must have found Ian's work because literally within half an hour Ian was there and it was all just very real like you never expect that you're going to wake up one morning and be stuck in a house fire. Like we we were so, so fortunate. Emily, I leave the kitchen door to that room open so that Mitzi has access to outside. And if that door had have remained open, it would have rapidly spread to downstairs and we would never have got out. Oh, I need a drink. first couple of months after we would be paranoid that I could smell fire and smoke and even the hissing and the crackling sound I could still hear so I would f like freak so from the pictures that I have inserted this is the aspect that you will have seen so I think you'll agree it's turned out much better so that leads there because Ian's trimming the bushes outside and then and that room down there is my office so that's it guys i hope you enjoyed today's video as much as you can do when it is kind of 
a very emotional and motive triggering video but if you did enjoy the content and you felt like you've had a connection with anything that I've said today please do feel free to hit that subscribe button and always ding that bell we are survivors we live to fight another day